Hello and welcome everyone to my channel Code with Ease by Varsha. So we are doing Code Java interview questions. Today's question is what is the main difference between string buffer and string builder and what is the overall significance of these two classes? So first let's talk about what is the difference. So string buffer, before we talk about the difference, string buffer and string builder are used to manipulate strings. Whenever we are trying to do any string manipulation operation, but in an efficient way if you want to do, then we use string buffer and string builder instead of using the traditional string class. The reasons for doing this, all of that we are going to uh, discuss in the next slide where we talk of the significance, why these two classes came into being. But first, let's talk about the differences of these two classes, the main difference, the major difference, which is in term of thread safety. So what happened is earlier the string buffer class came into being and then later on string builder. String buffer was, uh, it came into being because the string class was immutable in nature. What is immutable? Anything which cannot be changed. So string objects once created, they were not being able to change and we needed some way to create mutable strings where we can change the string as and when needed, there's more flexibility. So string buffer came into being, but string buffer had performance implication. It was not very fast because it is a synchronized class. If anything is synchronized in terms of threading language, what happens is if there are multiple threads that is trying to manipulate the same string object, which is the string buffer object, they will not be able to do it multiple threads will not be able to manipulate this string object because it is synchronized. So in th that is the reason why string buffer is giving me more thread safety whenever multi-threaded environments are there. Multiple threads trying to manipulate same string, string buffer is giving the protection that it will not allow that. But on the other hand, string builder class was not synchronized, which means if multiple threads are trying to manipulate a string builder object, it was allowing it to do so. As a result of that, what happened is the performance implication. String builder, because it was not synchronized, it was much faster. So wherever the speed and the performance was a factor, string builder performed in a better way than string buffer. And that is why string builder become a huge preference. But again, if it is a multi-threaded environment, string buffer will always be a choice, the preference. So the major difference between string buffer and string builder is in terms of thread safety. The second thing is because of the thread safety comes the uh, performance implication that string buffer is not faster, whereas string builder is faster. So depending on the scenario and the use case, we can prefer to use either of them. But the similarity between these two is they're used to create mutable strings because they provide efficient manipulation of strings. In the next slide, we'll discuss the significance, like why these two classes actually uh, came into being. What was the problem with the string class? So let's... So stay tuned for that. Okay, so we talked about the differences between these two classes. Now let us go talk about what is the significance, like why these two classes actually came into being when we already had a string class in Java. So the first line talks about, it represents the mutable strings. So if you have to talk a bit detail about mutable, immutable, we have to know a bit of context about the string class, how it behaves. So string class in Java is said to be immutable. What is the meaning of this? Mutable means anything that can be changed. Immutable means something which cannot be changed. In Java, when we are using string class, we instantiate the class uh, using, uh, there are two ways basically to create a string object. One is we do something like string s1 equal to we use double quotes and we write the string within this. This is one way. Or we do something like string s2 and then we use a new operator to create a new object and then we write new string and then we put in what object we want to create. Both of them are two different ways. In the first case, we are not creating an object. What we are creating is a literal. In Java, string class controls a special, uh, a specific portion of the heap memory, which is called string constant pool or string pool, whatever you may call. So whenever literals are being created, it is first check if it exists in the string pool. It's like a pool of strings. If it exists, it is not going to create that literal. If it doesn't exist is when it is going to create. So eventually what happens is, let's say I have another string S3 and I have the same content like hello. So what it will do is it is not going to create two different hello objects in the string pool. S3, S1 will point to the same hello object only. So why this is being done? To optimize for the memory. If I have hundreds of literals with the same string value, I don't have to allocate different space for different string. Because the content is same, I can just point to the same string only. From this point, what arises is the concept of immutability, which we were talking of. When we want to do any kind of string manipulation operation in this case, let's say I want to do something like uh, a concatenation. 
concatenation is something like I have my first name. I want to add my middle name to it and I want to add my last name to it. So in that case, what we will do is we have this string S1. We'll say S1 equal to S1 plus I want to add a string to it, world. So hello world, I want to create like this. So expectation is hello is there. I'll concat it with world. So hello world will be created in the string book. But that is not the case. It doesn't happen because strings are immutable, which means once strings are created, you cannot modify them or change them. What will happen in this case when we are doing any string manipulation is a new string called hello world will get created. And the reference of S1 will now point to this. The previous reference will be deleted. Previous reference as in S1 was initially pointing to this hello. This will be dereferenced. It will go and get garbage collected and a new string which gets created is being pointed to this. Which also sounds good enough. But what is the problem with this? The problem with this is this creates a lot of garbage in the heap memory. Imagine this concat operation is happening for 100 employees in an organization. So first, the first name is being pointed out. Then the reference is deleted. Now, fn plus mn is being pointed out, pointed to. And then this is de being dereferenced. Then again, fn, mn plus ln, the final name is being pointed to. So fn and mn will get garbage collected. So this is happening again for 100 uh, employees. So think of the scale of like how much garbage will get created just because I want to concatenate three different string variables. And again, why this is happening? Because strings are immutable in nature. Once you create a string, you cannot modify it. If we could modify it, then this problem wouldn't have occurred. Because of this reason has led to the formation or the birth of these two classes called string buffer and string builder. Not at the same time, both of them were released in different versions. But that is the point that they are now helping us to create, firstly to do efficient string manipulation uh, operations and to create mutable strings which means the existing string can be modified so as we have seen in the slide here that it will provide certain methods like append insert replace any kind of manipulation operation that you want to do we can use these methods instead of and this is not going to create too much of garbage because it will modify my same string only it is not going to dereference the older uh, uh, literal and then point to the new literal that gets created all of that is not going to happen because of that only the two points are coming number one efficient manipulation of strings using operations like concatenation append delete all of that and second is it is going to represent mutable strings so if at all my requirement in an application is that i'm going to do a lot of heavy string manipulation operations i should prefer to use a string builder class or a string buffer class depending on the thread safety context also so that I don't create too much of garbage, I don't waste too much of memory. So that is the whole reason why these ca uh, classes came into being and why we should prefer using those if there are heavy string operations that we need to do. So that is all about today's video where we discussed about the differences between string builder and string buffer. We discussed about the comparison of these two with the string class the mutability, immutability, string pool. I think we covered a lot of different smaller questions also. So I hope you guys like this video. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys in the next video.